Well, hello, mighty mini truckers, and welcome to the channel. Samson, the mighty sandbar. Well, as you can see today, we're out in the wide open. We're out here where I'm happiest, out here in the outdoors, enjoying myself. Just got a little bit of a hike in today. In fact, I'm going to throw the stick away if you don't mind. Well, today, the start of the show, Samson, yeah, he decided to stay in today because today is a very special day. Today, we're going to introduce you to Samson's youngest but bigger brother, Bruiser. Before we introduce you to Bruiser, I'd like to kind of give you a little bit of a backstory. I am a big Ford Bronco fan, especially the 60s and 70s models. That's the model years that I really liked. In fact, when I got married and my wife and I were out on our own, the very first vehicle I ever bought was Bronco. Well, in 96, when they discontinued the Bronco, I was not a happy man. Um, I thought for sure that was staple and they were going to keep that vehicle going over the years. Well, I kept my eyes open because I had heard rumors that they were going to bring the Bronco back. And I think it was about 2010, 2011, I started seeing that in, say, 4x4 Magazine, Auto Tech, you know, Auto Trend. And I watched the development of that vehicle because I wanted to see what they were going to come up with. Back in 2020, when they decided to come out with the vehicle, I pretty much knew already what the design was, and I really liked it. I really liked the look of that truck. It had a lot of reminiscence of the, of the 70s and the 60s, and I was gung-ho on buying it. Well, when they came out with all the specs and they came out with all the literature on it, I started reading up on it, and I wanted pretty much a basic, just a stripped-down basic model, but I wanted a... Uh, I wanted a manual transmission. And when I saw what they were pairing up with that transmission, I was like, wow, really? A four cylinder? A turbo four cylinder? And I know technology's gotten better over the years, but you know, I was expecting for them to at least come out with a V6 in that in that truck. So I was a little bit deflated. Um, I decided at that point I wasn't gonna buy one. It's, I started adding stuff on to the, you know, they had a website that you could go to, and I started adding all the options up and trying to get everything the way I wanted it. Before I knew it, the truck was up around about $50,000 and I just couldn't, I just couldn't spend that kind of money on a vehicle. There's another vehicle out there though, that I've always liked. I've always liked it. Um, you know, it's been in this company's uh, lineup since the fifties. Um, and it's known for its reliability, it's known for its quality, it's known for its capabilities. There was one particular year and one particular model that I was looking for, or series I was looking for. And so I began my research and I started looking. Well, lo and behold, after all my research, because I was looking mainly domestically, I ran into a company that was carrying JDM imported of that vehicle. I'm not going to tell you what it is just yet. I think you probably know what it is by his name. But so I contacted um, Duncan Imports and Classics in Nashville, Tennessee, and spoke with Mike Bass, really nice guy, nice representative for them. And I told him what I was looking for. And he called me back after a while and he said, Tom, I've got the vehicle just for you. He said, I've got one that I think you'd really like, but I think this is the one that you really need to look at and and buy this vehicle. It's a great vehicle. It's got low mileage. It's very clean. It's got quality you know, written all over it. So I want you to look at it and I want you to see it. So after that, I showed it to my wife and she was like, hey, let's buy this vehicle. Well, that's my backstory as to why I decided to buy Bruiser and kick the Bronco to the side. And I'm glad I did it. Well, without any further ado, as we always say here on the channel, grab that favorite cup of joe, sit back and relax, buckle up, and let's go. Folks, I introduce to you Bruiser, our 1993 JDM FZJ80 Toyota Land Cruiser. And as you can see, he came into the States in really, really good shape. But before we do anything else, let's go ahead and do a complete walk around. Well, folks, just bear with me a little bit. I'm going to try to hold this camera fairly steady. 
But uh, starting out on the driver's side, we're going to start with the paint. Um, Bruiser sports the dark green metallic mica paint. And right now, in this shade, it almost looks black. But when it gets really bright out, metallic really pops out. And it's almost a light forest green. So you get a couple different kinds of shades of colors with this truck. It's pretty nice. Uh, the other cool thing about it is Toyota had issues with um, their paint jobs back in the 90s. Um, a lot of times they'd spray it on, uh, the paint on, and then they'd put a clear coat on top of it. Well, that clear coat a lot of times was peeling after years, um, you know, being in the sun, getting abuse, and it would peel. Um, so the engineers at Toyota figured out pretty quickly what was going on with that. So what they did with the Land Cruiser, basically, um, they mixed in the clear coat with the actual paint. And then they put multiple layers of it on the vehicle. So if you ever get a scratch on it, as long as it's not down to the, you know, down to the primer or down to the to metal, a lot of times you can buff that scratch out and polish it up and it's like brand new again. Now, Samson Sports VX options, okay? And that's pretty much, it's not the sport options. It's more like uh, what we call today the soccer mom options. <laughs> But he's got a chrome, he's got a chrome package on him. And as you can see, the mirror is chromed instead of painted. The door handles are also chromed instead of door instead of painted. And that's all the way around. He's got a little bit of chrome trim at the top and a little bit of chrome around the bumper up front and in the back. Now he also has his original aluminum alloy rims or wheels and they're 16 inch he currently has 2570 r16 uh bf goodrich tires on there um i'd like to probably put some 33s on there right now they're a little bit over 31 inches but i'd like to put some 33s and i'll probably put a two inch lift on him in order to achieve that as far as brakes bruiser's got both front and rear disc brakes now at the bottom, he has his original OEM aluminum alloy running boards, and uh, they came in really good shape. I got to do a little bit of work on them. They're starting to get a little bit of oxidation on them. Along with the running board, Bruiser also came equipped with the front and rear mud flaps. And I do like mud flaps just because they protect the vehicle, on the, especially on the bottom of the quarter panels. Or get any kind of uh, rock damage and of course that's the other reason i like the solid aluminum running board that he has that also protects the bottom of the quarter panels from any kind of rock damage let's go ahead and move around let's go to the back here and that's one thing i do like about the toyota land cruiser especially in the 90s series you've got to lift hatch on the back and we'll show that to you in a little bit but then you've also got a tailgate and that's why i consider this vehicle more of a pickup truck than an actual suv eventually we'll talk a little bit more about the rear back here let's go ahead and move around to the passenger side of the vehicle also as you can see he's got this he's got the uh, rain deflectors on the sides and that's uh, the Toyota rain deflectors. They actually have the Toyota stamp on them. Um, and those are pretty sought after from what I've heard. Um, let's move on over. Go more towards the front. And as you can see, he's got that funky little mirror off to the left-hand side. You know, I've heard all kinds of stories about why that is there. Um, somebody told me that they thought it was for parallel parking but anyway I don't really use it that much occasionally I'll use it just to kind of keep an eye on the yellow line since it's his right hand drive uh, vehicle so uh, that's what I use it for one thing I did miss on the driver's side if you look there is an actual orange turn signal there it's actually on the panel the quarter panel there that's an added fish feature that they had over in Japan um, that actually ties in with the turn signal so when you're Turn signals are popping off, that pop-offs too, so it gives the uh, other drivers around you 
um, an indication that, you know, you're going to be turning. I'm going to step out here to the front of the vehicle. Now that we're at the front of the vehicle, let's go ahead and talk about it. And let's start with the headlights. These headlights are actually a two unit headlight um, or two unit light. They've got the headlight and they also have the fog lights in them. So that's a pretty neat little option. Now out to the side of those headlights, you have the markers. And then below that, you actually have the turn signals. Now, if we look at the grill, you actually have Toyota stamped on the front of it. I think it was 94 or 95 that they began starting to use the uh, Toyota emblem instead of putting the Toyota on the front. And the brand new 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser that's coming out, that's coming to the States from Japan, they switched back to that. They started putting uh, the stamped Toyota on the front, which I think is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and pop the hood. Let's take a look at the drivetrain. Okay, now that we've got the hood raised, as you can see on both sides, we actually have hydraulic lifts. That was one quick, good quality piece of equipment they put on this truck back in the 90s. Um, I mean, this hood is super heavy. I'd hate to have to lift it every time and put one of the pry bars up underneath it to hold it in place. So that was really nice for them to do. All right, let's step in here and take a look at the engine bay and take a look at uh, Bruiser's powertrain. All right, Bruiser's got the 4.5 liter gas inline six motor. Okay, uh, it is fuel injected. Some of the earlier models, models of course, were carbureted. But uh, that fuel injection definitely helps with the mileage on this vehicle, which isn't all that great. <laughs> I'll tell you about that here in a little bit. Um, it pushes 212 horse horsepower and it pushes uh, 275 pounds of torque to the rear and to the front. So this motor is definitely built not for speed, but for crawling, okay? The block on this motor is uh, made out of iron. It was cast iron. It's not an aluminum alloy block, okay? Uh, the nice thing about this engine, even though it adds weight to the, to the overall vehicle, um, the, in, the Toyota engineers built this motor this way so that after 300,000 miles, the engine can be rebuilt and it can be rebuilt three times. So you can almost get a million miles out of this motor without having to throw the block out. Now, the other cool thing about this, and we'll move over here, look at the canister here. That's your air induction. That's where the um, air filter is. This thing has got a super top notch, tight air filtration. Um, as you can see, the road that I came in on is gravel and it throws up a lot of dust. And I've been driving over this for more than a year now. And periodically I pop that air filter out and I'll knock it out and take a look at it and nothing comes out of it. I mean, it is super tight and the air filter looks brand new. I'd show it to you, but it's a long process. But anyway, now that we've discussed um, Bruiser's powertrain, now Bruiser is all wheel drive all the time, okay? And he does have four by four. Uh, he comes with the center diff lock. Uh, some of the units came either with the center diff lock or they came with the rear diff lock or they came with the uh, rear and front diff lock. Let's go ahead and talk about his fuel economy. Um, Bruiser has a 25.1 gallon fuel tank. He gets 13 miles to the gallon in town and averages about 17 miles per gallon on the highway. He is definitely not a fuel miser. I was going to say, if you're worried about fuel economy, this may not be the vehicle for you because he definitely sucks fuel. While we're still talking about the front of the vehicle, I did forget something. Let's move over here to the driver's side. I don't know if you can see this little plastic black thing here, right here. That is actually a headlight sprayer. In other words, uh, it sprays washer fluid up on the headlight to clean it off. Thought that was pretty neat. You only usually see these on uh, the JDM vehicles or the Japanese vehicles. You didn't see those come in on the ones that came into the States. So I thought that's pretty neat. The only thing is you don't want to run this vehicle through a uh, car wash that's got brushes because you can easily knock these guys off. 
Uh, you can still find them, but hey, just avoid that and you'll probably be okay. Now, here's another area that the Toyota Land Cruiser, especially the 80 series shines. Back here, like I mentioned before, you've got a lift gate, okay? Lift that up and it's got the two hydraulic units on either side to hold that in place. But the other cool thing about this vehicle is that it's got the tailgate. Just pop that latch right there and drop it down. And look, you've got a tailgate. Um, that's why I consider this more of a pickup than an SUV. Now, I couldn't tell you how many times I, you know, I've had to sit on it to take my boots off and put my, new, my other shoes on. It's really nice to have. But the other cool thing is I can spread something across here and I can put my tools on here, as you can see. Sorry about the junk in the back, guys, but I am working. <laughs> but uh, you can put your tools here. You can uh, work on it. In fact, I've got my chainsaw on here. I've worked on it multiple times on the back of this. It's just another cool feature to have. In fact, I wish that the 2024s had this option. I think it's really cool. I think it's um, something that's very helpful and very useful. Bruiser's taillights are aftermarket taillights. They're LEDs. Uh, he didn't come originally from the factory with LEDs. Of course, they're their standard taillight. They've got the turn signal, they've got the backup light, and of course, a brake light. Now, Bruiser's pretty much um, factory. He has all the factory equipment. He's OEM, but he does have some minor additions and add-ons. As you see here on the rear, I've added a hitch to it, a Kurt hitch to him. I've got uh, a boat and a trailer and, you know, a camper that I tow. So I had to mount that on the rear. Now, the other thing is his exhaust. I don't know if you caught this earlier, but the original owner added this Hyper GT uh, tip at the end of it. Why? I don't know. Except maybe to change his, uh, his sound up a little bit, but I really can't tell that much of a difference. In fact, I'm thinking about taking it off. In fact, I might actually put a Flowmaster unit on him um, just to help him get a little bit more power and also change up the notes on his, uh, on his sound. Now, before we wrap this up, I forgot to show this to you, but the rear windows on Bruiser, uh, they're split windows, so you can slide that one side or the front to the back to give you more airflow if you ever need that. That's another nice little feature to have. Well, that finishes up Bruiser's exterior. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into his interior. We're gonna look at his options, uh, his equipment, um, and so forth on the interior of the, of the vehicle. But since this video is getting a little bit long in the tooth, I'm gonna go ahead and separate it into a two-part series. Uh, so if you haven't already done it, ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on part two, uh, Bruiser's interior. Uh, and folks, if you like this video, or any of our other videos, don't forget to smash that like button. And please, you know, subscribe to the channel. That helps us bring you more content. Get outside, enjoy the great outdoors. Take a child, fishing or camping, create those memories, and happy trails. Ciao.